the dark side of the chain. Fasten your seatbelts. An animated discussion is about to take center stage. John McAfee, McAfee Crypto Team. Brandon Smitana, Skycoin. Moderated by Monty Mumford, Mob76. Morning, how are you? How are you? Oh, come on. John, get them, get them going. Uh, how are you guys? All right. Excellent. It, it's too early for you, I know. It's too early for me. Oh, really, dude, same here. Um, we're going to talk about the dark web. We're going to talk about the dark chain. And we're going to find some stories for you that will probably make you laugh. So, um, I'm an idiot. About a month ago, my wallet was hacked. <laughs> I lost a... Welcome, welcome aboard. And okay. that happened to you too. Eight months ago, my wallet was hacked. One of my security here at the end, his wallet was hacked. Two weeks later. Welcome to the wild west of crypto. Well, welcome to the winners. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, have you ever been hacked? I wrote the wallet, so no. You, did <laughs> <laughs> I looked at your Wikipedia page. Yeah. You've done some funny shit, man. Tell, tell us more about the dark side of your life. Oh, I don't even know where to start. So I was in a Bitcoin from the beginning, and I've just seen crazy shit. I can't even talk about it. Um, you I, sure? <laughs> so I, I got, like, kidnapped, like, uh, three months ago, and, uh, like, four members of my marketing team. You were kidnapped? In my house, yeah, home invasion. I had a... Five members of my, uh, four members of my marketing team came in and they uh, hired five gang members, beat the shit out of me, <coughs> broke my rib, knocked a tooth out. Uh, and Yo, Where was this? Which city? In, in, my, in Shanghai. Whoa. And uh, beat the shit out of my wife. And then uh, they, they were like, gonna, they're like, give us 10,000 Bitcoin or we'll kill you. And I'm like, I don't have 10,000 Bitcoin. <laughs> and then, um, and then, and they're in jail now for like a while, like 10 years. But uh the <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do you, I mean, I'm really sorry about what happened to you and your wife, clearly. I've had worse. But, did, but did, you've had worse? Yeah. Go on, then. I guess I'm not talking about that. Should you say more, yes or no? And let's add more. Come on. So come on. They, uh, this was funny because every week the Wikipedia editors would delete the page about Skycoin because they said, oh, you're not noteworthy enough. You don't have enough articles. Then after the kidnapping, we had like 50 news articles about the kidnapping. So then th they couldn't delete the Wikipedia article anymore, but now the whole Wikipedia article was about the kidnapping. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God forbid kidnappers come into my house. The world, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, clearly you, you're well, a man that knows it. I'm surrounded by Navy SEALs and the U.S. Marines. <laughs> Seriously, okay? <laughs> Two of them are over here. Please, God, you know, we have more guns than the U.S. Army. This was... Uh, <laughs> Which was the guy, I'm sorry to point you out, he lost your Bitcoin, was it? Yeah. Uh, yeah that was, I yeah. think we should all get together and get our money back. <laughs> yeah? Let's have a vigilante group, yeah? If we can talk about that later, that would be awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so, yeah, we've been victims of the dark web, well, the dark side. Do you think they thought they were going to get Bitcoins? They thought they were going to steal, like, hundreds of millions of dollars and that they were going to, like go retire in Fiji and like, uh, <laughs> and I think they were, they told me like they're going to take me to mountains and kill me if they got the money. I'm like, if you're going to kill me, why am I going to give you anything? Just kill me already, you know? Absolutely. It's you're like, a, you're yeah. a brave guy. There was a, there was an example in the UK where someone did the same thing and said, give us all your Bitcoin. And so the guy <laughs> just gave him a, <laughs> he gave him his public key. And they were like, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, clearly they can't get any of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you say, John, it's the Wild West, right? It is the Wild West, absolutely. And, and nine out of ten companies don't really exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I audit every company that I deal with. And, and three months ago, I audited a company out of Africa where every single director, developer, uh, an employee did not even exist. They had <laughs> fake photos and fake ideas. You know, everything was fake. There was nobody there. Uh, and, and this is not uncommon. So nine out of ten companies. I was talking to a gentleman last night that was negotiating um, with uh, one of the large exchanges, 
um, for you know to get to get listed, and gave them a bunch of money, and found out that who they were negotiating with was not the real exchange. You've got to be careful. Oh, this, absolutely, this absolutely. Fucking world. You also did something quite extraordinary, which may appeal to some of the dodgy men in the audience, <laughs> um, but a coin for prostitutes. Yeah, a, a, absolutely. In fact, so you don't, uh, so you don't see the the bad that you don't see on the credit card bill, the happy ending. You just I, actually, a, a I actually advised a a group called Pink Date. You know, they they contacted me and said, "Will you help?" I was like, "Well, fuck yes! What a great idea!" Um, so you know, if, if you're using if you're using cryptocurrency, your wife is not going to see your credit card bill and go, "Hey, what's this two hundred dollars for?" or five hundred, or depending where you are. <laughs> and so, um, so I go, "Oh, sure." Um, but they never could get their act together. I mean, their pimps are always moving into other cities and what have you. Yeah. But but uh, you know, I tried for a while. But but why not? I mean, the cryptocurrency will be in every uh, single industry. Why not prostitution? Brothel coin. What's that? Brothel coin or something like that. Yes. Or a happy ending coin. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the pink date coin is what pink they were trying to. Okay. Yes. All right. Absolutely. Um, we were also talking about real life experiences. We've heard about yours, Brandon. It's a terrible one. <laughs> and I'm glad they, they were brought back to justice. Now, you, sir, when you left Belize, huh? you had an interesting time. It, well, you know, I, first of all, I'd been on the run for 45 days. Uh, for the past, two, uh, you know, uh, the past 20 of those days, I was in an attic right next door to the Queen Street police station. <laughs> all right? So Best they're place. not going to look for me there. I mean, you have to eat. I had to go out and buy food and drink and things. So um, people would, would pass me on the street and not even look at me because I was next door to the station. So the way I escaped is I raised... But hang on, what, what were you banged up for? I mean, what were they after you for? Oh, allegedly for murder, okay? But they had killed my neighbor, for fuck's sake. I, I'd been at war with the, with the country for months. Um, so, no, they, they, just, they just... And by the way, I wasn't charged with anything ever. Right. What they did is, is my neighbor was shot. All of the neighbors were questioned. Right. They wanted to question me. Well, fuck no, I'm not getting my fingers removed in uh, some no, back room. So... Um, <clears throat> but at any rate, I had arranged with uh, Vice magazine, who sent two reporters um, down to Belize to monitor everything, including wow. my escape if it, if, or my arrest, whichever were to happen. So they were both white. I was white. I uh, had uh, Robert King, the famous war photographer. He was there. And one of my ex-girlfriends who looks white. And then I had retained a close friend, a Belizean, that had a van with the visitor, you know, with the, uh, the circus logo on the side. So what I had done is I had been watching the weather reports. I waited until there was 100% chance of rain. Well, why on earth? Pardon? Why? Because they had roadblocks every 10 miles on every road looking well, for me. Well, it's raining the police won't they're, be watching. I know for a fact. <laughs> the police in Belize do not stand in the fucking rain and check cars. So I have photos of us driving by police who are huddled in their, in their trucks looking at us with my photograph on the dashboard. <laughs> okay. And they're watching us drive by. That's how Hi. I escaped. Yes. So that got me to the border of Guatemala. Then... I had a friend who looked like me with my documentation get arrested across the border in Mexico. You arranged yourself to yes, be that, arrested. And here's why. Because they had the Coast Guard blocking all the, the, the sea exits from, from Belize. So I knew for a fact the Prime Minister is so stupid, he would believe it, which he did, and had the Coast Guard moved all the way to the northern border. The next morning I took a fishing boat out <laughs> to sea and, and into Livingston, Guatemala. So that was it. Very uh, good story. Brad and uh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you ever been arrested? No. No. Oh, you're There's missing out, dude. I want to tell you now. <laughs> but you, you change your name every year. I thought oh, that was no, why. I, I thought you were on the run. No, no, I was on the and, and like the dark net and the, the the like the remix networks and the the stuff like before Bitcoin, like um, hash. There was like hash cash and charm cash and. A bunch. There was this one that was funny. It was called Al Qaeda.net because they were like trolling <laughs> the FBI and like always screwing with them and giving them the middle finger. And they were always the FBI was always trying to hack them. And they're always you yeah. Know, it's like uh, I don't well, you know the you, cyberpunks. Cyberpunks, absolutely. Um, what's your favorite prison? Mexico. 
Mexico. Oh, good God, it's like, it's like party time. I mean, they put 14 or 15 people in a tiny cell. People are telling stories. You know, they're, they're, they're getting booze and marijuana, you know, uh, but it, coming into the cell. Oh, fuck me. I'd rather be in New Mexico jails than anywhere. Really? really? Yeah, I've, I've, I've been arrested a few times in America. The last time was for a DUI. I spent 48 hours in jail. Good God, is that boring. I uh, bet. Now, they put you in a cell by yourself. It's all gray, you know. The food's terrible. Goddamn Mexico, absolutely. If you want to have a jail experience, I recommend it strongly. <laughs> you heard it here first. We've only got about five minutes. I think it would be great. I mean, you've got amazing stories. But maybe a couple of questions. Maybe the first couple of questions um, directed at Brandon. I think he's a legend in his own right anyway. Absolutely. Has anyone got a question for Brandon? Please. <laughs> No, come on. One person. I'll, I'll buy you a drink afterwards. <laughs> okay, we better just get on, Brandon. Mm -hmm. We better just get on with it then. Just with keep what? talking. Just keep talking. Okay, Good man. Go. Okay. How does he keep carrying on with all the threats and everything that's coming at you? What gives you the sort of passion to keep getting through it? Right, and I'll buy you a drink later. Good man. Thank you so much. The rest of you can yes. fuck off. I agree. I agree. When I started uh, in Bitcoin, it was all these libertarians, and we were like going to take out the Federal Reserve, and you know, and we were going to get rid of the central banks, and that's why everyone created. That's why like Bitcoin was created. It was, you know, and there's much like Ron Paul supporters, and and it was, it was actually pretty funny because like a lot of the crypto people, all of them work for the U.S. government. They all have security clearance, and no, no one put their name on it, and they're all like. Uh, constitution thumping, like, I hate the government, kill the government, they have all these guns, but then they actually work for the Department of Defense. Um, so that, that, that was pretty funny. And um, so the, the whole idea behind Bitcoin was that you would create this money that uh, wouldn't, would be backed by mathematics instead of being backed by humans, because humans are corrupt. And, um, and then in the last two years, it became like, uh, oh, ICO, money raining from the sky. I need to raise $2 billion. <laughs> Give me my, I have a, yes. you know, sh they're just like shitcoin ICOs. And uh, um, so the, the whole market sort of, so we, you know, you had these financial crisis in 2008. And that's what brought Bitcoin from a dollar to $1,000. And, uh, and people forgot what the origin of Bitcoin was, which was the idea to have a, a money or financial system that was backed by mathematics instead of by corrupt humans. And people just forgot that as soon as money started showing up. Like, I remember Bitcoin, when it hit $100, everyone in LA that had owned Bitcoin was basically uh, buying, like had all these hot girls showed up, they had a new car, they quit their job. They, and one of the guys asked him, what are you doing? He's like, I'm condo shopping. I'm like, that's your new job? So he's just like going out every day shopping for condos and going out at night with like these four hot blonde girls like doing cocaine and partying. And, uh, and he has his friends who still have the office job, his coworkers, and he's like, oh, let's party, let's party. They're like, I can't party. I have to, I have to wake up at 8 a.m. tomorrow. I can't party every night. I can't, I can't, I can't do cocaine every night. I can't, I can't do this. And <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> The, uh, so what's happening with Bitcoin now, and people ask why people need Bitcoin, and uh, what's most interesting, or why they need blockchain, you look at like Argentina, or you look at Turkey, like two weeks ago, their currency just collapsed, and people had 50% of their savings wiped out overnight, or Cyprus, the government's broke, and they go into your bank account, into your pocket, and grab like 70% of your money and call it a bail-in, and they yeah. just steal your money to pay their debt. And um, so the, the whole financial system is basically a debt ponzi. And the, the new financial system is sort of being, is going to be built on top of blockchain because the old financial system doesn't, it, it works until it doesn't work. And then you need... But I, I'd have a question for that, right? So I I'm, I'm agree with you totally. But when my wallet was looted, <laughs> right, I, as someone that's moving into a new world, away from a centralised bank that's turned me over for 30 years and charged me five pounds on a, a you know, ATM transaction for 100 euros or whatever, um, my bank would have saved my money, no, right? They if, I mean, I would have got my 50k back if someone had hacked my account. And then I'm pushed back into the world of traditional centralised banking. And I'm reasonably sorted. I'm not an idiot. Do you know what I mean? But I just wonder whether the mass adoption of crypto is, if it's like an old lady that's got 5,000 euros and she thinks, well, I want to put it into a safe place. It, that's a long way away, right? No. Uh, the, the, you know, I think that's the wrong approach. You, you, 
you're putting your money into, into crypto in order to make money as an investment. That's the problem. That is the oh, fundamental yeah. problem, yeah, is yeah. it not? Use the fuckers. Yeah. Use it. That's what it's intended for. The power and the value comes from how many people are using it, how many transactions. Fuck me. If we took all of the money in our wallets and started buying shit yeah. with it, that would cause crypto uh, to go, agreed. right? But, but, I, but, but I can see a wave beginning in that area. You know, like if you travel to uh, Riga in Latvia, you can pay in Bitcoin with certain air, Baltic Air, I think. And there are places where... I don't, I don't think people know enough of where they can spend their Bitcoin. Do you know what I mean? I, I would rather never use fiat currency again. Well, fucking use Google. You can buy cars, houses. You can yeah. order fucking pizza from some places. We drove by in a little town in, in Lexington, Tennessee, a few months ago, a restaurant. We accept Bitcoins. Yeah. I wasn't hungry, but I said, we're stopping here to eat. <laughs> so, no, use it. We have a, a debt policy. Uh, people, I don't think, understand how the global economy works, and the people who understand are never going to actually talk or tell the public. And they're, and they're like, okay, we have this problem, we can't fix it, and it's, this is going to happen, the pension funds aren't going to get paid, how do we make money from this? That's their only concern. Like, no one actually, they're like, okay, I have this problem, you want to fix it? Are you going to pay for it? No. Do you want to pay for it? No. Do you want so they have the problem, no one wants to pay for the solution, so then they then turn and say, okay, since this problem is going to happen and no one's going to fix it, how do we get rich off it? And no, no, no. so they're, they're looking at the, this, uh, it's really interesting because when I, when, I, when I was doing Bitcoin, we'd have these idiots, like these narcissists, uh, and we'd put them out at front and say, yeah, yeah, he's the lead developer, yeah, yeah. And we were, we were seeing if the government was going to send a SWAT team and like go into his house and shoot him in the face, or if he was going to get tortured, or we thought they were going to like take him out. So you have these like canary people that were just wanted to, you know, be in the spotlight and this, we were going to see if like they got shot. And, uh, and what happened was the, the billionaires and the trillionaires, and, the, and the, they actually came in, and they're the ones pushing blockchain now, like Soros. When I went to Israel, and Soros invested $20 million in this company, and he invested $40 million in this one, and this, you know, Goldman Sachs invested in this, and JP Morgan invested in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's actually not only just a revolution at the bottom, a grassroots revolution, but it's actually being pushed at the top. And I'm like, why, if these people own the banking system, why are they promoting blockchain if it's going to take them out? Absolutely. And because they know that it's not going to last forever. Yeah, yeah. It, it's actually very unstable. It's a, it's a debt policy, basically. Yeah, great job. It says kindly no, well, I was gonna, There's I, I, an ugly I, I, motherfucker back here with a baseball bat. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was going to ask if anyone had a question for John. One more. You can fuck off. You can't <laughs> ask a question because you didn't ask him a question. I'm very <laughs> sorry. You had your opportunity. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, John. Okay.